This airbrush costs more than $700. This is probably the most expensive airbrush in the world for miniature painting. And in this video, I will compare this airbrush with a $300 airbrush, which is really popular for many pro painters. A $100 airbrush, which everybody says that is the best airbrush for beginners. All the way down to this $15 airbrush, which is the cheapest airbrush you can find on Amazon. This kit looks pretty good at first glance, but you will quickly see that is not when I will show you the painted Space Marines that I made for every airbrushes in this video to compare the experience of usage and the smoothness of the paint. All the airbrushes will be compared on their packaging, their beam angle and obviously painting. I painted five different Dark Angels Space Marines exactly the same way with base coat, two fine highlights and one shade with pure contrast paint to make them look cool. And the base coat of red once the greens was completed. So on the packaging of this $15 airbrush, there are three sides of cups, which is cool to have more precision or undercutting an entire army. There are also three sides of needles and nozzles, and some random stuff including an air hose which costs approximately $9. So is it a good deal or not? Well, honestly, as you can see here, it works. But because it works, that doesn't mean that the airbrush is good. I think that the experience of usage of an airbrush is really important. At least 50% of a good airbrush is about the usage experience. This airbrush experience is terrible. It works, but not steadily. Sometimes it splashes some paints with no reason. Sometimes the airflow goes down and go back to normal. And the sensation in the end is terrible too. Absolutely no smoothness in the trigger at the push or the pull. It's catastrophic. This is the result of the airbrush step and the finished model with this airbrush. Honestly, I really forced myself to finish the miniatures for the video, but I threw the airbrush away instantly after finishing the marines, and I'm never buying it again, and most importantly, I do not recommend it to you. Absolutely not. Let's move on to the airbrush I used to paint this space marine. The kit is pretty similar with three needles nozzles. The 0.2mm is already in the airbrush, while 0.3 and 0.5 are in the box. There is also a quick release coupling adapter, which is a great tool. It allows you to just pull to eject the airbrush from the air hose. I have one for every airbrush that I own. And the most interesting thing in this airbrush is that it's pretty close to the most expensive one. For me, this airbrush means a lot. It's the first airbrush I owned, and with which I became an airbrush user 8 years ago. The person who sold it to me told me that it was the Iwata counterfeite, and so that it was a good airbrush. Obviously, if it's a counterfeite, it's a good airbrush, okay? Well, it is way better than the $50 one, but now that I also own the most expensive airbrush in the world, honestly, it can't take the comparison. But the feeling in the end is good. Not the best, but really okay. When using, it's incredibly good for just $40 and can be really precise. In this case, I airbrushed with a 0.3mm needle because I broke my 0.2 needle two days ago. Ouch. One thing that is quite interesting about this airbrush is this little screw right here. It's a pressure screw, I guess. I don't know how to call it, but this screw can reduce the airflow in the airbrush to zero. So you can adjust the pressure of air by a simple movement instead of changing it directly on the compressor. By the way, I use this compressor. I really love the control of air pressure and always want it on my airbrushes. That's also why the $15 airbrush was this one and not this model. I really love the screw air pressure. But in practice that doesn't change anything because on the $15 airbrush, the screw doesn't work. Haha, <laughs> not funny. 
This is the result of the airbrush step and the finished model with this airbrush. So I think that this airbrush is great for someone who wants to try airbrushing and is not sure to like and who doesn't want to invest a lot of money. I loved it for many years and still love it. I just loved more the next few ones of this video. This marine was painted with the Harder and Steinbeck Ultra 2024. According to some YouTube video and HNS themselves, the best airbrush for beginners. And I will say it now, yes, I completely agree. For the $100 kit, there is the airbrush in a plastic case. And that's it. It's good to know that at this price level, someone tested your airbrush before sending it to you. So the structures of this airbrush is really thought for beginners. The cup is removable, but with no thread, which makes it easy to put on or to remove. So if you need to do a little step like an OSL, you can remove the cup and put a little bit of paint easily. However, I don't think that will be the first thing to do with the airbrush as a beginner. But it's cool to see that evolution is possible. The most impressive thing of this airbrush is that it's really cool to use. The color system is great for the beginners, I guess. I did not use it too much just on one marine, but it was really intuitive. This airbrush has a 0.45mm needle inside which is BIG! It's the biggest needle that I used for this video and I thought that was going to be hard to make some fine lines. And it is, compared to the really fine lines I can paint with the two next airbrushes in this video. The good thing with this needle size is that it doesn't clog. In fact, it is the first time in the video that my airbrush doesn't clog. The color transition on the miniatures are also more smooth than the two less expensive airbrushes. Which is also a good thing for beginner, I guess. This is the result of the airbrush step and the finished miniatures with this airbrush. I was really impressed by the easy use and easy approach of airbrushing of this airbrush. Highly recommend it for beginners who are a little bit afraid of the process. Now let's enter the high-end category with this airbrush which cost $300. It's really expensive. This is the Infinity CR Plus 2-in-1 airbrush. This airbrush is really popular within some really good painters. I mean Andy Wardle, who is a two-time threshold winner, uses it. So if it's good enough for a threshold winner, it should be good for us too. It comes in the same box than the Ultra, but with more stuff. There are two cups, but with a thread this time. Two needle protectors and two sides of needle nozzle. Just because it's the two-in-one model, which is also the most expensive one. The needle mounted in the airbrush is 0.15mm and the second is 0.4mm. One thing that I love with the HNS airbrush is that it's really easy to disassemble them to clean it and also easy to reassemble them after, obviously. Sinon, ça serait vraiment très très con. Ils ont été disassemblés, mais c'est really hard to reassemble tout. There is also a cool feature at the bottom which is a position tracker. You can screw it on a certain position that will block the needle at a certain point. It's exactly the same process that the color of the Ultra, but completely adjustable and at the bottom. So, is it enjoyable to use this $300 airbrush? Yes! Obviously yes! If the Ultra is great to use, the more expensive airbrush is too! But there are some differences here. First, the size of the needle is a game changer in comparison to the Ultra. 0.15mm is really permissive depending on which zone you want to paint. It also allows you to paint really fine lines that you can see here on the leg. The composition is also smoother than the $40 airbrush for example. We can see that the paint is more smoothly applied and it's also really cool for base coating other elements. Here you can see this little part of the cuff which is based with the airbrush. It's really amazing! 
This is the result of the airbrush step and the finished model with this airbrush. Every time I needed precision for a project, I used the Infinity. But that's going to change at the end of this video because of the next airbrush. So I think that the problem of expensive airbrushes like the Infinity is that I am afraid to use it. I mean, with the two size needles and cups, I should use it every time. But I still use the $40 airbrush for big projects to not damage my Infinity accidentally. Because I'm not really really careful with my stuff. Let's remember the 0.2mm needle. Ok, now we will see the most expensive airbrush I ever bought. I didn't find any more expensive airbrush than this one. Here come the Iwata Custom Micron C+. It comes in a metal case wrapped in an Iwata tower. Amazing! Obviously, like the Ultra and the Infinity, someone have tested it before sending it to me. This airbrush can lift Mjolnir! It is worthy! You also get a complete instruction for every piece, a key to disassemble the nozzle, an eye water lube, an air filter, and obviously you have the airbrush! It comes with a 0.18mm needle which is a little bit bigger than the Infinity one, but you'll see later completely fine for everything you want to do. The experience using this airbrush is really really unique. The trigger is really smooth, the cup is large, but also let you use just a little bit of paint because it's really accessible. And the usage is amazing, you can do whatever you want. It can draw really fine lines, wide base coat or thin highlights. I don't really know if it's more capable than the Infinity, but I prefer the handy feeling with this airbrush. Maybe because I used the $40 copy for 8 years. I don't know. I think that this airbrush is more versatile than the Infinity. We will see in the conclusion how I'm planning to use my airbrushes. Because now I have a lot of airbrushes! I'm rich! Not anymore because I bought this $700 airbrush! So, using the Iwata Custom Micron is a pleasure. The trigger is perfect, good response, smooth and precise. I prefer that the air pressure screw is in the front of the airbrush, certainly by habit. I like the protection cap for the needle. You still have access to the needle but is protected from every angle. And the bottom screw for stopping the trigger is good too. It just needs one turn to be at the maximum position. Well. Maybe I'm a little bit influenced by the amount of money spent on these airbrushes, so I will make an objective comparison here. Every airbrush, even the $15 trash one, can apply smooth paint and make some lines, some highlight or whatever. But all the paints on the models are not applied with the same quality. You can see here the difference between the $40 one and the $700 one. The paint is really more smooth, the dots are less visible. Because that's how the airbrush works when the paint is projected by air. It applies it on the miniatures as many, 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 many dots of paint, which makes this airbrush effect and the transition between colors smooth. With the Ultra, which costs $100, there is a really good quality of dots. Here is the comparison of the beam angle for the 5 airbrushes. The wider the spray is, the more surface it can cover in less time. The tighter the spray is, the more accurate it can be. I think that the $40 is really ok, especially if you start airbrushing. I think that the fact that it's twice cheaper removes some stress for beginners. So if you have a limited budget and want to try an airbrush which can evolve with your skills, I recommend the $40 with its 3 size of needle. If you want a quality airbrush that can take you by the hand, I highly recommend the Ultra for beginning airbrushing. I don't recommend the Infinity or the Custom Micron for beginners. 
way too expensive. There are airbrushes for experienced people who want quality and precision. Personally, I think that I will still use the $40 one for priming, maybe sometime for bases. I will definitely use the Ultra for bases and Zenithal highlight on army projects. I love the feeling of this airbrush and it's a pleasure to use. I don't know for now if I will mostly use the custom Micron or the Infinity. I love them both, but have a preference for the Micron. I feel more confident with it, but I think that both can be useful. I will for sure use the Infinity with the tiny cup for tiny things. Now there are all the Space Marines fully painted side by side. Having a smooth paint is good, but what if your miniature is trash? Because your clippers pinches rather than cuts the sprue. Watch this video to understand what is the difference between pitching and cutting. And don't forget to subscribe! Okay? If you're not subscribing, uh, I'm crying!